Hello, Otto. Greetings. Greetings to Honduras. How am I feeling? Uh, I am feeling pretty good. I, I you know, given, given the circumstances. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, I actually, um, just two, three days ago came off the, uh, narcotic pain medication. <laughs> um, so I'm actually not fuzzy for the first time in a couple of days so yeah I've, I've, I've got a sling upgrade you guys can't really see on the stream but uh there there we go so new sling has I can I can do this this is the new this is the new upgrade okay I've been like locked down on a uh, immobilizing sling which is exactly what it sounds like like your elbow and your wrist are both like secured to your torso. And I, I, I found out, I mean, I knew already, but I sort of, I'm not good with like restraints, <laughs> like being tied down. Really mess with my head for a week that it was. So, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for asking. So this is, um, what am I coloring? Uh, this is hack slash... Uh, Resurrection number nine. I haven't done anything yet with this page. I haven't even changed the base colors or anything. It just got in from the flatter today and first day back at the table, so we're back at the desk. So I thought I would let you guys watch me flail around here. Uh, the penciler is um, C Lore, C E L O R. I I'm not sure where he's from. I, uh, I should probably know that <laughs> we, we worked on nine issues together, but uh, but yeah. So let's. I've actually already started. Um, I feel like the mic. I have to be right there on the mic. Let's see. Uh, without the uh, with just the flats. Yeah, it looks like this without the lines. And like I said, these colors aren't final or anything. I've got to go in and change the colors. But uh, if you look at it really close, you'll see that. Um, all of this is uh, very clean, jagged edges, which is what you want with flats. Always looks funny without the inks most of the time. And let's see, I'm also going to open this page. Yeah, this is basically, um, this is the same scene and so I'm going to be picking some colors from this. And also, I'm going to go ahead and fix... Uh, one thing I've noticed, and, and I would... And I actually kind of prefer it this way, but... There is... Um, I've noticed the things that I do on the iPad tend to be... Just a little bit darker than what they would be... Whoops, sorry about that. And on my desktop. But I know my desktop's calibrated right, or at least it's where I want it. So I've just been using the like a very subtle curves adjustment to brighten that back up. Alright, and so all I'm going to do now is um, kind of go through, and uh, I've got all of my rendering and all of these layers all in a group so that I can turn them off very quickly and get straight to the base colors. And that way I can grab the base colors from here and just paste them over here. Um, what was really funny is um, the first two pages of this were done um, with literally like my wife was doing the mousing with, with one hand. And I had my hand on the keyboard on the other and I'm like, click here okay now click over here now click there for the first page because I literally had one arm and like so much in Photoshop relies on having two hands you know hold alt hold control switch to this keyboard shortcut and so it was like oh god I hope this doctor lets me take this sling off uh, or at least changes the sling um, today and he did like I said I was really really happy to see that so uh, so that was a pain in the rear, but I only had to do that for two pages, 
and uh, so yeah, I'm back. I'm back at it now. Um, this is the first thing that I've tried with it. It feels okay as long as I don't go like try to go up with the elbow, which I really can't yet. Uh, but I'll be in this sling for about a month, and only thing I can do with this arm is to um, like. I can let it hang basically like my PT for the next month is just to like lean over, let the arm hang in front of me and like swing it back and forth. <laughs> like that's the extent. So I'm not actually using the muscles, but I'm moving things to keep it from getting too tight. Um, so yeah, that is, that is my life right now, <laughs> but it's better than it was. I am not complaining at all. Uh, so yeah, I like your skill. Thank you, Juan. Thank you very much. Hmm. Did I try it with my feet? No, I probably would have been better. Um, I did render the first two pages with my left hand, believe it or not. So, like this page here. Uh, sorry, let's get over here. Yeah, actually all of this page and the uh, end page one, this was completely rendered with my left hand. <laughs> so don't look too closely. Uh, so we already have this like loosey goosey art thing anyway. So, you know, it kind of, the art's very, has a lot of, of uh, what's the word? Like it just has a lot of action to it. It has a lot of uh, movement and it's kind of, messy and that's what well, but that's kind of what we're doing um you know so this guy hit a cat oh my god this is this is awful this is the worst thing that happens in this book and some really gory stuff happens in this book um but yeah for now uh, i'm just going through and kind of i'm going to grab all of these background layers or all of, all of the, um, actually I have a layer for that. Um, you said, so just a fast way to kind of tie all of the background together. I'll just dump one color over all of it and lower the opacity. I need to get my, I need to get my keyboard a little bit closer. So like I'll kind of grab like a generic brown, put it over um, everything, except I don't want it in these windows. Whoops, don't want it in the windows. I don't necessarily want it in this hallway. Now I'll just lower the opacity of this layer, like. 50%. So it kind of tints everything to like that brown color, which is kind of the color of the library in this scene. And uh, I usually do the same trick for books too, although these books are all kind of in the same ballpark. If you have a bunch of stuff that you actually want to sort of homogenize color wise is I'll just go in and grab all of it just hold down shift with the magic wand and select everything and then just uh, you can in this case you can just adjust it like I can lower the uh, the saturation or play around with the hue or whatever I just don't want any like crazy colored books standing out so yeah did you practice left hand in preparation? <laughs> I not really. I kind of tried it one time, and I'm like, yeah, that sucks. Hopefully, I don't have to do that. <laughs> and then I and then I did anyway. So I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to, but uh, it was just it was just a lot slower. I mean, I, it could be done, but there's a lot more mistakes, and it took me four times longer. You know, um, at least probably uh, it is nighttime so we're going nighttime out here and I don't know what I have I was talking to somebody about this the other day I have like this aversion to using 
like deep blue. I don't like the way it, it's just too dark a lot and it, it prints weird, I think. So one thing you'll notice about me is that a lot of my work is what I'll do is a lot of blue jeans and sky and all that stuff is usually like leaning toward green slightly. I just don't like navy blue. I don't like the way it looks in, in CMYK, I think. Once, it, once you put it in CMYK, it just gets really dark, it seems like. So I try to avoid it. And I'm terrible at like planning pages while talking, apparently. Um, let's look at a script. How about that? I haven't actually got I haven't actually gotten around to reading the entire thing. Like I, I read up to where I was, which is probably not the best. Okay, so panel one is actually kind of all about the cat. The cat's appeared and the vampires don't like the cat there's probably a, a story there i don't know about yeah cassie is unhappy about the cat cassie is bloody cassie passes out all right so pretty straightforward so what i will probably do and i like to kind of plan ahead of time hopefully you're planning your pages ahead of time instead of just starting <laughs> so um Yo, psychotech arms. So, really, in the first panel, of course, they're all kind of looking at the cat. So, I, I sort of want to create some focus, you know, here. Why can't I draw? There we go. So, I want to kind of create some focus here on the cat, but he's really small in the panel. So, uh, what I'll probably do is leave all of this, like, background and the cat. Uh, this warmer and sort of cool off all of this I mean I'll still I'll still put plenty of highlights around but it's gonna be like all these highlights are gonna be like doing this number so they're all sort of like they're all they're all wanting us to look at the kitty cat here so that's the plan like I'm not gonna do any heavy highlights down here or anything but it's not realistic at all, but it doesn't have to be. Most coloring I've found is not realistic. Um, so yeah, see, so yeah, we're just gonna kind of have some some rendering, kind of framing this there. That's the plan in that panel. Um, here is pretty straightforward. The action's right here. She's not that important, so I'll probably kind of push her back a little bit. Uh, cat gets the wall. That's the most dramatic panel in the in the series. It's terrible. <laughs> and let's see. Panel, what number is this? Panel one, two, three, four. Cassie gets to her feet real fast, lunging as to where Dario was. Dario is the cat. Chet is backing off, hissing, and uh, Vampirella is in the corner off panel because it's funny <laughs> is this is this her eyes I think it is yeah so here's Vampirella whoops there we go that's funny so we're gonna we'll make her eyes yellow or something so anyway so she's got a pretty bad head wound which is why she sort of like goes dizzy here and then passes out so I might actually like I might do some more blood on this, which I haven't really done before on this series, but I really need to sell like the fact that she's not well. I don't know if this is like enough blood. So we might do like some blood running down or something. Hello comics and stuff. You guys are in the art of DHT. Some regulars. You guys coming in for the, the late night stream. I appreciate it. I'm just trying to still to kind of think through this page. Um so yeah, I have a, this is just the texture that I'm using on this series that I think I made this one myself. This one is with some cardboard that I found. It just had a very nice, subtle feel to it. So I usually mask it off but for whatever reason procreate does weird stuff whenever with some mask when it's a smart object i think 
So I just rasterize it and delete it from the gutters. But it's very, very subtle. You guys can probably barely even see. But there's just a little bit of texture to it, nothing too fancy. And I'm going to start with the backgrounds. And backgrounds on, on this are pretty simple. Um, let's see, do, do, let's, let's resize some of this stuff. I'm actually working in a 1080p shaped window. Um, <laughs> in my, like my monitor has space all around it because it's like a big ultra wide and, um, but it looks bad streaming. So I'm actually working in, a, in like a portion of my monitor basically. Like I said, they're going to be pretty simple here. Now, one thing you guys will see me doing a lot, and, and someone always asks how I'm doing it. Um, so if I want to select just a, uh, like just the backgrounds in just one panel, what I have over here is... I have foreground on a separate layer. Let me turn this off too. So this is just the foreground on a layer by itself. So I can really quickly like alt click that or is it control click? I can never remember. Control click that picture and it'll instantly select the entire foreground. If I control click the BG layer, that immediately selects all the background. And if I want to just select the background in just one panel, I also have a panels layer with all the all different colors. So what that means is, for example, in this layer, uh, this panel right here, panel four, I can go to the background, select it all using the that layer, then go to the panels and just make sure that this intersect with selection is checked up here and click that panel again. And now you can see it's only selected the background in that particular panel. So it, it overlaps the selections when you click, and, and where, where they're the same, uh, it selects those. So it's a really quick way to just select all of it at one time. Um, I've started doing that a lot on this series, especially when the um, when the background's pretty. I, I'm doing it pretty simple. Like I'm not doing a ton of rendering um, in the background. So what color is someone just standing there feeling dizzy? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, thank you. Um, I had someone say, glad to see you back. All went well with the surgery. Yeah, everything went fine. Um, they did end up um, re-anchoring the labrum, which is sort of like the cushion in the joint. And um, and, the, and so they totally, it was, I actually had pictures. The guy took some pictures of during the surgery. And um, so that was kind of cool. Um, they showed me those today during the follow-up. And uh, it looked, I mean, even to like a lay person, it was like, yeah, this doesn't look normal. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. But he was able to fix all that stuff, and and I've just got a, a long recovery now to get to get back to like full strength. Um, I'm kind of playing around on this. I don't really know what's happening right now. So, like, I want her to like she sort of zones out for a second and then passes out, and. I think I want to go like sickly green. We'll probably do the red, the blood on top of that, so we don't kill all the red color there. I reserve the right to change my mind about that green. <laughs> How do you go about that red selection viewer thing? I'm just hitting Q. So like if I select something and hit Q, it brings up quick mask. 
which you're supposed to be able to edit a selection in this mode. I don't really do anything with it. I just look at it to see what's selected. Um, I should probably look up a tutorial on quick masking at some point, but I just, I've never really used it for its intended purpose. But I just use it to see like what, what was actually selected. Alrighty, so what I'll probably do next is just kind of separate some of these planes out a little bit better. And I'll eventually I'm going to put this in Procreate and do the rendering there. But I, I usually just get the background done first. and Because I still like the... It's hard to beat the magic wand combination with all these layers and things that I do, so it makes this part go by a lot faster just to stay in Photoshop. Uh, let's see. So that's too dark, but we're going to lower the opacity. And still want to check your colors afterward and make sure you haven't done anything to make it too dark. And what I'll probably do when I start rendering is I'll actually like paint paint some of this away. But already I've got a pretty nice like foreground background separation happening there. Just separating those planes is what they call that. Yeah, I know this cat getting hit is this is so tra this is very traumatic. <laughs> I mean, really terrible, awful things happen all over this book, but none as bad as this hat this cat getting slammed in the wall. Cruel and unusual. So someone had asked me on a stream not too long ago about doing holds in color holds in Procreate. And if you if you haven't seen it, I did do a video recently on YouTube explaining that process. I found a way that works. So and it's 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 really stupid simple. I wish I had thought of it earlier, but basically you make the inks layer a mask itself and that totally fixes the problem. So, <laughs> this cat doesn't look orange anymore because he's surrounded by super warm colors. So, what do I want to do about that? Do I want to change the colors around him? Probably make him a little bit lighter. That works, probably. That's a really good example of like color relativity at work. Like 
that was the color that he was, which he sort of looks brownish because he's surrounded by yellows and reds. So I kind of had to really pump up the yellow on that. I'll probably end up doing something else with this panel, but it's close enough for now. I just want to get this all to a point to where I can get started and procreate and hopefully knock this out. But I think we're in a good enough spot, so I'm going to save this. I'm using um, a, a very strange looking program called A PowerSoft, all one word, phone manager. I, I don't know how I found it. I'm probably looking for some way to capture iPads. Um, it works really, really well. All you have to do is four finger swipe up on the iPad, turn on screen mirroring, and there you go. Now I need to rearrange. Do, do, do. do you still sell the art education package? Yes, of course, <laughs> always. <laughs> go go to, um, there should be a link somewhere. Oh, it's right over my head now. Go right there. All of my courses are available there. There are six now? <laughs> Seven? I don't remember. There's the two big coloring courses. They're like 10 hours each. That's the Photoshop coloring courses. I mean, it works in whatever, but it uses Photoshop. There is a beginner's guide to procreate. There's an advanced guide to procreate. And there's a digital, uh, digital painting, like grayscale to color with procreate but you can use whatever and there's a color theory course I think that's it what is that six anyway all of it is there hello from Volgograd oh I know I messed that name up was I let me know if I was close it sounds Eastern European, Russian, I don't know. Taking a wild guess, probably wholly inappropriate to guess. But based on the fact that your name has no letters that I can... Oh, it does have an M and A in it. I was going to say, it has no characters that I recognize. You'll have to help me out on where that is. This thing is... I pronounced it right. I'm in shock. Okay. Um, so first off here, I want to go ahead and let's select all of the foreground. Yeah, man, like this is this is really hard. Like it's hard for me to get my. It's safe for my arm to get up to this point. I'm not going to hurt myself, but it's a bit of a stretch to reach the top of this right now. Um, yeah, this is going to take some getting used to. I'm basically painting over her with like. A low opacity version of the background just to sort of push her back a little bit and I will probably lower the opacity on this once I'm done I just don't want it to be that that like pure skin color so it's very, very subtle, but his skin pops a little bit more now. Love your vid. So happy to catch your stream. You make great and incredibly inspirational art. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. I mean it. Glad I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well enough. <laughs> well enough. Yeah, I know it's late, guys. If you don't, I know if you can't stay very long. I understand. I'm just glad to be back and talking to people again. Um, all right, so let's start with this panel. Uh, basically, this is just a deep, deep blue at about 50% opacity. And it's acting as sort of like a frame for this cat in this panel, which we sort of want to draw some attention to. So 
I'm basically going to put a mask out. I'm going to put a mask on this layer and paint it away. And it's going to be so nice to do this with my right hand. <laughs> after, after like three days of, oh my god, it was awful. Really, really terrible. I don't recommend coloring with your wrong hand. It is not pretty. Actually, it ended up being okay. It just, God, it was slow. It was really, really slow. I, I was shocked that it, like, worked as well as it did. And so this, I'm just painting with black on a mask right now and just taking this away, basically. So basically I still want to keep all the highlights sort of moving toward the cat here. So it sort of creates a, like of a visual, what's the term? I don't know. <laughs> like a, to create sort of a, uh, some focus to get us to the cat here. Because it's such a small thing in the panel with all this other stuff in it. And I really want you to notice the cat first. And so that's why all this stuff is cool in front. And this is sort of a cheat, like you probably wouldn't have very much light on him, but I do want you to at least see Vlad down here, so it's not a very realistic light, but again, realism is overrated in comics. Yeah, slope's kind of a good word. It wasn't what I was trying to think of, but it'll work for our purposes. And the way that I've been doing this book, I've sort of been rendering it in passes where I'll do like all the shadows in a layer and then do some highlights on a layer and then do brighter highlights on a layer and then so I, I don't know, it's 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 been able it's it keeps me from it's sort of a formulaic way of working, but it keeps me straight on what all needs to be done. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. Actually, I'm going um, to make a new layer. I'm going to set it to multiply. And I'm going to drop that color on it. I'm going to mask it off. And again, I'm basically just going to paint on this mask with white to introduce shadows in all the places where I want them. And this is just a flat brush that comes with um, Procreate. I just realized I need to change the color of this. So she's further sort of in the back in this panel, so I'm not going to be quite as um, as detailed on the shadows 
with her. And I'm actually just going to select the foreground to make this easier. Two finger select on the layer will select all the contents of the layer. I do find that I smudge more in Procreate than I ever did in Photoshop. I just like the tool better. I never really had a habit of like doing a lot of smudging. I don't I don't know why, but I just never did a lot of it. I will probably do like a blur effect over this arm later, but I'll I'll do that in Photoshop. I don't know. Procreate probably has a way to do that. In fact, it does have a way to do that, but I, I get a little more control with Photoshop. Oh, more people. Hello. Hello, John. Nice to see you back. Nice to see you back watching. Yep, if you've just joined, I've got a new sling. I can color now with my the correct hand. I'll be in the sling for about a month. And then PT, phys, uh, physical therapy for about uh, another two or three months. And I should be fully, like, fully recovered within, like, probably nine months to a year. It's it's a pretty, pretty intense uh, surgery, so. It was really scary, is what it was. Like, I've, 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 I've recorded some videos. I don't know if I'm ever going to put them online or not. I did record sort of a... Um, uh, kind of a, I don't want to say, kind of a vlogish type thing that I might one day decide to put online. But I don't know yet. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I was very, uh, it was very emotional before the surgery. It was, it's, it's pretty scary when, you know, they tell you, all right, you're going to wake up. And because they did, uh, what they call a nerve block, which basically, which basically means that I'm not gonna feel that arm when I wake up. Like, I mean, you, you know how you wake up and like your whole arm's asleep or or your foot's asleep or whatever, that like weird feeling where you just can't feel it. Yeah, that was gonna be. Um, that's what I was gonna wake up to, and then it wears off in like 12 hours. But of course, I'm like thinking, well, what if it? What if it doesn't? <laughs> what if it doesn't ever come back? You know. I mean, it is sort of how I make my living, so it's like, that was pretty scary. But um, I don't like, I don't like how green this looks. So... I said I'll probably end up doing some kind of like overlay thing. <laughs> I have to stop. Like wave your arms around like you normally do. It doesn't. Yeah, don't do that. Um, so yeah, that was kind of freaky. Very, very freaky.
Yeah, the the problem with like doing behind the scenes type vloggy type stuff to me is just time, like time that it takes to to it's just one other thing to edit and it's the kind of thing that requires like a lot of editing, like you know, with, with tutorials like I just tend to turn the recording on and say what I got to say. And I don't really script things out very often. Like I, at the most, like I might have like a, uh, what do you call it? Like just kind of a bullet list maybe of like a, like an outline of what I want to talk about. But, um, but I usually, um, just kind of go, you know, uh, and part of that comes from the fact that it's hard to make time to like, like I'm always impressed with channels like um, Marco uh, Bucci. He's a digital painter that like he has this series. It's called Ten Minutes to a Better Painting, but it's like the strongest, best ten minute tutorial that you've ever seen. <laughs> and it's like you can tell that he really like spends an insane amount of time like planning and scripting and you know like making sure that it's perfect. And I have lots of respect for that because I can't do it. I just, I don't have, I don't have the patience. I think even if I had the time, I don't think I've got the patience for it. So, um, but yeah, and, and with the vlog thing, it's, it's, again, it's one of the, one other thing that you would have to like spend a lot of time on. And I just don't really, uh, don't really have it. So until one day when I have like a, whole squad of editors or something then <laughs> which I'll probably never have will never have uh, no no vlogging on the regular for me Yeah, I definitely want to figure out a way to do more, you know, personality <laughs> type stuff. Um, but th those videos, like, I mean, and I guess, I know, I mean, it's not all about the hits, but the, the few of those that I've done, it's like the interest seems so low, uh, you know, just from people watch time and, and, you know, the views they get and that kind of thing, you know, it's like... I don't think people care enough <laughs> to want to see that stuff, but I probably should do them just for the subscribers that do care. Um, and that is something I want to try to try to work on eventually. I, I have a pretty big list of uh, videos that I need to do. Um, basically, <laughs> I've got like my. Uh, little Google keep document or whatever and it just it just never ends it just keeps things get added to it forever so there's no shortage of content 
That's for sure. Okay, so that's shadows. It's all just on one layer. And I might go back and add more later. So this is going to be uh, lights. And uh, this is, someone always asks, this is in linear light mode or, or linear dodge, I think it's called in Photoshop. It's just add mode and procreate. And there is sort of a, uh, a method to the, to the madness here, believe it or not. Um, I basically want to, whatever I'm doing here, I want to contain it to, to only the areas that I have, that don't have shadow in it, okay? Um, if that makes sense. So basically, I want to avoid putting this anywhere that the, um, that the shadow appears because they shouldn't really overlap not this particular light source anyway and so it's very subtle as you can see it, um, but it adds a lot that other that extra layer of light basically and plus I, I tend to sort of put it in all the places that I want you to pay attention to so it sort of it sort of draws your eye too so it kind of serves a dual purpose Every now and then, Procreate will do this thing where it doesn't want to... It's not freezing, but it's like... I think I've got... I need to clean the screen. That's probably what it is. I haven't cleaned the screen in a while. If it gets too much oil on it, like, it'll... It'll stop reacting to touch as well. Brazil lucky. Yep. Welcome. Colobo Studio? Is that how you say that? Yeah, I think it's sort of a rule you have to have considered doing a podcast. I think everybody has, or it feels like everybody has at some point. I've been a huge fan. Thanks for all the content. It's been helping me learn a lot. Awesome. Moving to Canada. That's fun. I have never been to Canada. I've actually never left the, uh, the States at all. A bit of trivia for you. <laughs>
Yes, good morning wherever you are. It's very late here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have anything really interesting to talk about every all the time. <laughs> so, you guys feel free to ask questions or comments or whatever. Not using quite as strong of a highlight on on the on the shirt since it's not going to be as reflective as the skin is. <laughs> Good morning. It's not morning in Missouri. I do know that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, right now all the highlights are on a, on a separate layer on, uh, on top of everything else at the moment. Or on top of the base colors underneath the inks. Good morning from East Africa. Wow. <laughs> I love your course. Best gift ever received from my husband. Oh, well, good job on the on, on the husband there. Nice work on his part. Tell him I said thank you. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, it's a, it's actually pretty simple. Um, I know it looks like there's a lot going on here, but um, if you let's turn all this off real quick, and I'll run through it. So this is just base colors, okay? There's really nothing else going on there. I've done some painting on the background, like on that layer itself, just in normal mode. Some of the gradients you're seeing in the background or whatever. Um, there is that's this little green bit down here on this layer because she's sick there is this like blue that I'm just using just to uh, separate that that frame that uh, plane there we go from everything else um, that's just darkening 
Vampirella in layer two a little bit. Uh, shadows, all right there. That's in multiply. And then all of these highlights so far in add mode at like 70% ish with this really saturated orange. And the brush is toned way down. Like the opacity on the brush is very low. Like add mode is like, it's pretty crazy. Like it'll blow things out pretty easily. Um, I think I've got one of these on Patreon that's set up like this. If I don't, I'll make sure it's in. Actually, I'll be posting that this week. So I'll make sure that one of these pages is on uh, Patreon if you're on there too. You can actually look at the PSD file. Do, 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 do. Brother Man in Japan. <laughs> awesome. What do you expect to see when you get a file from your flatter layer wise? Just one layer with all the flats? Do you like to have them sectioned out and labeled? Uh, it depends on the colorist, I'm sure. Um, when I first started out, um, I just had my uh, flatter just making a flats layer underneath. And over the years, I've kind of had them do more and more. Um, I think I can show you guys. All right, so in Photoshop, basically they send me this like so everything that's visual that you can see here it's just it's the inks it's the flats below that is this layer which is really just the foreground characters I have them separate that out separately um, they do the same thing for the background it just makes it easy to select all of that at one time and then they do this panels layer for me also I mean I could do all this but it's just time that spent on every single page that's really not a creative endeavor <laughs> so uh, I just pay my flatter extra to take care of some of this too and then everything else is me and I also I will send them um, when I first start a new project or, or a new arc or if anything changes is I'll send them um, you know swatches or like I'll send them a sample page basically with just a couple of the colors you know either scribbled in where they're supposed to be or I'll send reference of you know this is the color I want to use for this guy's shirt for this issue or whatever um, so it's 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 actually probably more of just more of an assistant type like a coloring assistant type work than just flatting at this point um, so yeah, um, that they're they're going beyond. How I have to stop gesturing. <laughs> they're going, um, you know, beyond just the the basics of just flatting a page, you know. So, but yeah, um, there are some colorists I'm sure that would prefer, you know, something different than that, you know. So I, you know, it's hard to say, you know, across the board, everyone does this because it's just not really it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> There, there almost isn't, a, I don't think there's much in the way of standards when it comes to this stuff. Like, everybody's kind of got what they do, you know, and that might be different from what somebody else does. So, you know, if you ask another colorist that question, they might tell you something entirely different. Okay, this page is coming together pretty well. I'm going to go through now and add like sort of a reflected environment like indirect light or a bounce light and it's only going to be in the shadows because the direct light is going to overpower all of this stuff and so you won't see this this layer over any of the places that um, uh, already have direct light so it's all going to be sort of contained to the shadows all right, and after this, I'm going to call it. So hopefully, I'm thinking another 15 or 20 minutes, maybe. This layer, by the way, is also in add mode. Um, it's just uh, low, lower opacity. It's only like 25% opacity, so I can't get it as bright as the other indirect. It's kind of a way to force myself to keep this subtle. Um, so I, like no matter what I do, like I can't really get I get pretty bright actually, but I can't. It takes a lot of strokes to get me close to what that yellow light is basically. 
but uh, and the brush is just in normal mode like on that layer and I'm just sort of thinking about um, you know using it's a warm direct light so I'm just using a cool um, cool bounce light and it's very subtle like I don't even know how much you guys can even see this but um it's just kind of a general like a general glowy very soft light that's over everything else it's hard to describe but And I'll probably smudge some of this around, and because it's a, it's a little harsh at the moment. Like it's going to be soft. There really won't be any hard edges on this. But it pretty immediately creates a nice effect. I'm just smoothing some of this stuff out. Because with this kind of light, it will never have like a really hard edge to it. And you can also be, you can also be pretty loose with it, like it doesn't, you know, I'm not being like extremely super careful or anything about about it. Uh, where would you recommend to create and share your portfolio? Um, I think the best case scenario is like if you can swing like an actual website, you know. Um, you know, like through Wix or Squarespace or whatever's cool these days. Like, I don't even know. Um, I think that's, like, optimal. But, like, if if, it, if that's if the cost of that is a problem, then, like, um, I would say, um, you know, just wherever, DeviantArt or there's ArtStation, you know, is a pretty cool website. A lot of it's dedicated to, like, 3D and stuff, but... They don't care if you have 2D line art. They have a whole section for that too. I think. I don't think there's a rule against that. I mean, I've got stuff up there, but I've also got more... Uh, like, I've got painty type stuff up there too. But ArtStation is great for just... If you want to be like really impressed <laughs> and like question everything that you've ever thought about how good you were go to art station and look around like these are like the best of the best of the best people that are a lot some of these people are like you know working in huge movies and video games and like it's it's a it's a very impressive website um there's a ton of cool stuff on there What did I think of the portfolio review? Oh, yeah, earlier um, this evening or this afternoon, um, Kaufman, I've lost your... Randall, right? Yeah, forgot your first name for a second. Um, Randall here got a portfolio review from um, uh, Nick Velarde on Twitch. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was really cool. Um, the... Um, I, I You know, one, one thing, one takeaway I, I know that you can have is... There were a lot of things where we said the same exact thing, <laughs> you know, so it's like you got you know exactly what to work on. And that is that that's worth a lot. Like, I, ho I hope you realize that. Um, 
I mean, you might take it as, well, I know that was screwed up because they both said the same thing. But don't look at it that way. Like, you know precisely uh, what's what you need to do. You know, I mean, he gave you a really very uh, solid, um, you know, review on all of that. And um, I thought it was neat. I mean, I learned stuff, too, watching those things. I mean, it's like, okay, he would bring up stuff that I didn't think of or I didn't see or just didn't notice or whatever. Um, but I thought it was, I thought it was a cool, I don't, I don't think I've ever really seen that before. Uh, there may have been one of the guy, Barry, a while back. Um, Filardi, um, F, it's Nick Phil on Twitter, N-I-C-K-F-I-L. It's F, his last name is F-I-L-A-R-D-Y. Somebody type it in the chat for me. My keyboard is, <laughs> is, is, I can't reach it at the moment with my gimpy arm. But uh, he did a portfolio review for uh, Randall on Twitch, and uh, it was very, it was very solid. And um, um, like I said, Randall has has improved a lot over the last year or two. And here I go again, like talking and can't uh, work at the same time. Um, but no, I, th I thought it was all pretty pretty dead on. Um, So that was, yeah, that was, it was a lot to take in. I'm sure, yeah. At least, I think they end up on YouTube eventually too. So like you'll be able to go back and rewatch or take notes or <laughs> or whatever. Um, I think Nick is, like, I think I'm too nice sometimes. Like Nick really doesn't pull punches. And I, and I, I think that's, it's a good thing. Like, it's 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 a hard thing for me to kind of wrap my head around though. It's like, man, I don't I don't want to like destroy this dude. Like, and whereas Nick will be like, I'm gonna destroy this page, <laughs> you know. Uh, I should probably. I mean, it, believe me, if things are wrong, I, I I have no qualms. You can ask students that have posted in my courses. Like, they all get reviews on whatever they whatever they post, basically. And um, so it was kind of neat seeing. Um, you know, he'll, 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 Nick will go after you, <laughs> you know? So, uh, I thought that was cool, but I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to be a little meaner sometimes, I think. Uh, or maybe he's wrong. I don't know. <laughs> it's one or the other. Now, you know, the first really, I've told this story several times, but like the first portfolio review that I ever received, like really, like a really good one, the guy kicked my ass. I mean, it was just like, and here's why you suck, you know, machine gun at me, and um, it was jarring. Like it, it really like, I was like, what? Like I thought I was, I thought I was okay, you know. Uh, and this was while I was working on, um, while I was working on Hack Slash, the first Hack Slash, and they, these were these were pages from Hack Slash, and. You know, I was like, man, like I thought, uh, I got an image book. I'm, I'm okay. I'm good, right? Like, yeah. But uh, there was a lot of stuff that I was doing that wasn't really right. And, um, but it, it helped tremendously. You know, it was like, okay, yeah, you're right. I got to work on this stuff. You know. And some, something else, this is kind of off off topic, but something else that I've started doing lately is um, rendering skin with more, and this is really obvious, I should have thought of it earlier, but I sort of render skin sometimes, I was guilty of rendering it with the same type of like reflectivity as anything else, and it really does reflect more like if you have on like this t-shirt that I have on, this dark gray shirt, and I have like a yellow light and a blue light, you're, I'm going to see more of that on the skin getting reflected than I am just, you know, on a shirt that absorbs a lot of light, you know. So I've been trying to work on that and and make sure that my textures are all actually separate. Uh, 
All right, so this page is almost done, guys. I think uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I've started playing around with overlay layers or overlay mode layers. And I'm going to set my panels to a reference layer. And so basically what that means is when I select with the magic wand, it will select based on the layer underneath even though I'm not on that layer anymore, which is kind of cool. And uh, just going to get a big soft brush, pretty low opacity, pretty big. And toward the bottom of this layer, I'm just going to kind of lay in some blue. And it's very subtle, like, I don't know if you guys can, if that's even registering. But it kind of ties all that stuff together just a little bit better. And then same thing except opposite, like get some orange. And all this stuff is pretty orange, so it's not making a huge difference, but that's a little too orange actually. But yeah, it just adds I don't know, it adds something that's hard to quantify. But um, you can see it on her skin, how it's kind of warmed her up a little bit at the top, and him, especially the guy in the middle. So it, it just adds a little bit of interest to what's going on. And it's very subtle, but I like the way it looks. And so I'll just kind of throw that around, heat it up a little bit. I'm not really satisfied with the cat panel. Now I kind of am. <laughs> it just needed it just needed some orange. Like I feel like it's an incredibly dramatic choice, but it's like a cat that got hit. I haven't rendered this cat at all in panel one, by the way. I gotta fix that. Um I can't remember who, where I, I picked this up using overlay. I think it was some, I like accidentally used it one day doing something and it was like, oh, this kind of looks like something cool. Like I should roll with this. <laughs> But it's kind of unpredictable also, like I feel like I have to kind of play around with it sometimes. And this one's going a lot bluer than the rest because she's like fallen, looks a little dramatic. Doing work with Rising Sun. Is that a is that a publisher? I know there's a lot of little publishers out there that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> yeah, awesome. What sort of stuff do they uh, do they do? Anything that I would have may have heard of. Um, by the way, I'm just going through um, and just putting a little bit of white, or it's really close to white, along some of these edges. Just to act as sort of, I actually don't want like pure white just to sort of act as a, a uh, just to draw some a little bit of extra attention it's 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 very very subtle but 
I like the effect that it has. And especially on skin. That's about the only place that I use it. Alright, let's paint this cat up before I forget about it. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Oh, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe's pretty legit. Whoops. Are you getting away from cut and grad? Um, I, I think I am a lot. Um, I guess it it depends on the project. Like if certain art just works better, you know, with that sort of style. And if and if I came across some some work that like I felt needed that, then I would do it. But I'm getting a lot more comfortable with. Uh, with being a lot more brushy than than uh, than just uh, you know using a lasso all the time. Um, I don't think it's like a right or wrong kind of thing. It's just it is what it is. Um, I thought about doing some more blood on her, but like I don't know if I want to do that now or not. I don't know if there's enough blood. I think I'm going to try adding some, and then if I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. Um, blood brush. Um,
I don't know that I've ever actually painted blood like that before. And it is like right after this panel. So I feel like she needs some of it over here too. It doesn't have to be a perfect match, but I just want to get it close. <laughs> better. I believe that she's going to pass out now. I think you can... Um, hello, Marty McFly. Um, a lot of it changed when I started using Procreate, honestly. like I felt like I had better control over the brushes than I did when I was using a Photoshop. And, um, so there was definitely, like, that was a part of it. Like, I mean, you can cut and grad and procreate or clip or whatever. Like, if I really wanted to, I could. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, it just, it, this feels better to me, basically. Um, I want to smooth out some of this, this red, uh, can you guys see my brush okay with this? Like, I know it's small. This is like the best Procreate can do in showing where the brush is. I know it's not like perfect or anything, but I still think that this cat is like, I think I'll fix it in Photoshop. I gotta play around with that panel three. So let's share this. Back to Photoshop. All right, so now we are in Photoshop. It's been a pretty long stream. I'm not. Let's see. I want. I'm gonna use this curves adjustment that I've been using on everything, and just it kind of saturates things a little bit and brightens it a little bit. It's just like a really subtle, simple S curve, and you can see like it just makes it. It makes it pop. I hate, I hate that term, but yeah. Um, what was I going to do? Okay, the cat in this panel. I think I want to... I want to do a levels adjustment just on the background. And I, and I just hit Control y to put this in CMYK because I knew that that like super red is not going to print but I just want to separate him from the background a little bit more yeah and even that orange is not quite as is uh, as orange and RGB but it's close enough I basically just want that separation between the cat and the background to be a little bit more and I think that did it I'm debating going cooler in this background layer in layer four, like or darker. Maybe that maybe darkening it is really all it needs because it's too close to their skin tones. So I'm just like playing around with that a little bit. Yeah, even pushing it a little bit toward like greenish even helps a little bit better. Okay, yeah, that's better. All right, I think that's it. But uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. Um, I don't stream live often, unfortunately. I wish that I had more time to. But um, if you enjoyed this, then um, be sure to subscribe. Most of you guys are probably already subscribed. 
crazy people staying up just late watching me. But uh, but thanks as always. I do appreciate it. Could not do this without you. And uh, we'll see you next time.